Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Welcome to Live Laugh Larceny, like VR for really cringy situations. <laughs> this is Trevin. And I'm Amanda. Ah, cringy situations. Gotta love them. Oh, yes. They are our bread and butter, really. <laughs> Truly. So, Trevin. Yeah. Do you have a dreadful dilemma this week? I have a dreadful dilemma that is kind of old, but I still really wanted to talk about it. When I was in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. I did a live show. Right. Which I mentioned in passing pretty quickly. It was for a show called The Karen and Ellen Letters. But I experienced this really weird sort of phenomenon while public speaking. Because I'm not used to public speaking. I don't really do it that often. Yeah. But I always say this thing about like anxiety or depression is like if you're falling down a really deep hole, eventually you fall for so long that you eventually kind of get bored falling because you're like, oh, am I ever going to hit the bottom or what? <laughs> and when it comes to public speaking or being in an awkward situation where I have to speak in front of people, it's usually not for very long, maybe for like five minutes or something. But this was a whole one hour long show. Oh, I didn't know it was that long. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a whole hour long show and I played a character. So we would kind of go back and forth and it was basically just like reading a script. I was trying my best not to overthink it while being in that situation because of course, when I first got on stage, I'm shaky, I'm anxious, I'm talking in front of a crowd. And then I started to kind of stop getting anxious because I was like, well, I'm just kind of stuck up here. But then I was trying my best not to like make a mistake in that situation because I was just kind of overthinking everything. I was having this problem, and I don't know if this happens to other people who public speak or not, but kind of like when you're driving and you just kind of zone out and then yeah, you wake up at your destination. Totally. So as I was public speaking and <laughs> reading the script, I was so deep in the anxiety and overthinking of reading this thing that... I felt my mouth moving and I felt like I had no connection to what I was saying. I could have been saying anything like I could have been Ron Burgundy, you know, <laughs> exactly. and just been like, fuck you guys. <laughs> I was thinking that like I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. I could have totally done that. I guess that's from Bruce Almighty, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? You know, I really appreciate that you cleared that up because I didn't <laughs> want to correct you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll correct myself. <laughs> But it's such a weird feeling because that was what the nervousness was making me do was dissociate from the words I was saying. And I used to make those jokes about Ron Burgundy or about whatever uh, that the unnamed news anchor. From it was like Baxter or something. I don't even know. But I actually feel more sympathy for those people now because in a nervous situation like that, I could have probably read anything just to get me to survive and get out of it. Oh, my God. So this is noted. Maybe for our future, we try to avoid any live teleprompter reading moments for you. If we were to do a live show, one, I would want to have a good amount of being free in conversation with yes. each other so I don't have to feel like I'm zoning out. Yeah, that'd be ideal. But also we would be reading our own stories, most likely, which it's so much easier when you're reading your own words. That's very true. So no teleprompters in your future. Noted, noted, noted. Unless yes. it's our own words. Mm -hmm. That is dreadful. And I hope that you actually did say the words you were supposed to. Either way, it was fun. And I am just curious if any of our other public speaker people out there, if that's something that happens to you or am I just broken? Yeah, please let us know <laughs> in the kindest way possible. Yes. Well, I also have a dreadful dilemma. And I told you about this briefly, how I went to a late night trampoline park party. Oh, yeah. Who was that for again? It was for our good friend Molly. It was for her nephew. Oh, that's right. I took both my kiddos and let me just say we've been to multiple trampoline park parties. Lila even had one herself recently. 10 out of 10. If you can swing it, I recommend it because the kids just get 
every bit of their energy out and it's amazing do they have adult ones with alcohol oh yeah you well yeah this one i don't think there was alcohol but yeah, shake up your belly I jump every time i always participate but the thing that was different about this party than all the other ones that we've gone to though is that typically we go during the day Mm-hmm. And this was an evening one because it was like the late night, like glow party or whatever. Oh, kind of like bowling back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a totally different vibe. We've never gone during the evening. I gave Winnie a later nap just so she could stay up and hang with the kids, you oh, know. Yeah. And I was like, all right, let's give them some sugar and let's bounce. Oh. It, it was a whole thing. Anyway. The dreadful part about it, and I guess it's not dreadful all the way, but it was just making me feel super weird. And it just felt like a weird combination of things coming together at once. Mm -hmm. They were playing music that I used to party to in college. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of like party hits. Like Like Usher. Like, yeah. They did have Usher. They had the Backstreet Boys. Which that was like elementary for me, guys. I'm not that old. Okay, (laughs) don't get it twisted. Sorry if you are. (laughs) But they were playing Paper Planes by M.I.A. and Katy Perry, Teenage Dream and, Mm. you know, pop party dance hits, I guess. But a lot of them were like things that I partied to. So it just was weird that a bunch of kids were jumping. And then also... I didn't know this because it was on a Friday night, late night jumping. It's like a hot spot for like teenagers. Oh. Yeah. So the party's jumping, would you say? The party in the club was jumping, jumping. <laughs> Literally, though. Did they play that song? I mean, it's a trampoline party. They should have. Damn. But it was a bunch of the kids in our party and then like a bunch of these like weirdo teenagers that were like, grouped together and just being weird. So it was just a really weird time. Trevin. It does seem like a really weird time. Teenagers, party hits, and then like my innocent angels just trying to bounce about. It was weird. It was a weird combination, but we had fun. I'm glad that you had fun. And I'm curious if there's like an adult themed night, like just adults to be hog wild with glow lights and jumping Oh my too. God, I wonder. Kind of like how I went to that Lego night thing, but maybe the trampoline seems a lot more fun to me. I will say this too. I feel like Jordan and I are definitely in the minority because every time we go to a trampoline park or our kid has had one, Mm -hmm. we jump too. But most parents don't. They do not want to. It's so weird. And another dreadful thing that I just thought of that happened at that exact same park is that we had the special socks that you have to wear to Uh jump and we already had some. So if you keep them, you can like bring them and not have to pay for them again or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's been a dreadful dilemma because I have so many different kinds. But we brought them and we were like, okay, cool. We get to jump with them. But no, because we didn't have a wristband. Also, they made Jordan pay 20 extra dollars just to bounce with our kids. Holy shit. Dumb, right? See what I mean? All these legal scams. What's the deal? I'm not here for it. Let us bounce. Please. (laughs) I mean, you're just trying to look cool with the kids. I know. Because like, what is up with the parents that don't want to jump too? I don't understand it. If you're a parent who doesn't jump, you need to let us know. Is it because you're trying to just look more powerful and you can't be seen having fun? (laughs) Or is it just because you don't want to like mess up your hair? Just from observing it so many times, Mm -hmm. I think the parents that don't jump either A, don't find any joy in it at all. Ooh. Or B, they don't want to look silly bouncing around. But I gave up my dignity long ago. Yeah, maybe I should take all that back because I honestly probably wouldn't jump in front of people either. (laughs) (laughs) See? Damn it. Jordan and I have no dignity. That's why. So Mm -hmm. today we are going to be doing a round of two truths and a lie. I've got three wires. Which one do I cut? I'll give you two truths and a lie. But wait, we don't have time for this. Boy, are we. And this week, because the temperatures are getting colder. Mm, A winter 69. And the winter 69 is coming to tell it's upon us <laughs> i'm going to be doing a two truths and a lie winter edition Ooh. are you ready not really i'd much rather it stay fallish but i know same but i gotta look to the future regardless of yeah. what i want those who uh, fail to prepare prepare to fail you know <laughs> so statement number one 
The greatest recorded U.S. snowfall was 37 feet, or 11.43 meters. Statement number two. The largest snowflake ever recorded was 15 inches wide and 8 inches thick. And statement number three. The coldest temperature recorded on Earth was negative 63 degrees, or 81.4 Fahrenheit. I know that's a lot of stats. So statement one, snowfall, 37.5 feet. Largest snowflake, 15 inches wide, 8 inches thick. Coldest temperature, negative 63 degrees. I'm going to have to say that that snowflake, there's something about it I don't trust. And you are incorrect, but Damn. I was with you. I bet that's cool looking. I was even like eight inches thick thick what does that even mean yeah is it even a flake anymore yeah i was like that sounds more like a ball like, like an a jumbo ice shrimp ball. like <laughs> doesn't make sense a jumbo shrimp <laughs> but yeah 15 inches wide and eight inches thick i don't know but that one is true were there pictures of that let's hope if there's not then i have questions mm -hmm. okay let me explain all of these really quick Statement three was the lie. Hmm. The lowest temperature is actually much colder than what I told you, surprisingly. Oh, that's scary. I thought negative 63 was a lot already. I know. The coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth is negative 89.2 Celsius and negative 128.6 Fahrenheit. Dang. Like when you see somebody with a billion or three billion dollars, I can't fathom that. Like, I don't even know what that even is. I know. Negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah, that's hell froze over. Literally. Weather. And it was measured at the Vostok station in Antarctica on July 21st, 1983. Mm. So it's been warming up since then. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But I did think it was kind of weird that the coldest was in the 80s. Hmm. Just kind of random. Also, number one, explained further here. So in Tamarack, California, on March 11th, 1911. So way back in the day. And mm. this is random, too, that it's in California. Because statement number three, that was the coldest temperature in the world Statement number one, just to recap, is the largest snowfall just in the United States. I was thinking that the largest snowfall would have been like New York or someplace up top like Montana. Or, I mm -hmm. don't know. But it's in California and it was all the way back in 1911. Wow. Holds the U.S. record for the greatest snow depth ever measured, measuring 37.5 feet or 11.43 meters. That amount sounded right to me. But yeah, California... Yeah. I was thinking for some reason it was going to be Utah. Right. Utah. Yeah. Because I think Utah had one of the like coldest days or something too in the yeah. US or something. I always forget that California technically is a very large state and that it does have deserts on one side, but then there are like mountains and cold weather on the other. Like mm -hmm. I always forget. I'm just always thinking about the beach. <laughs> I'm just always thinking about the movies. Right. The movies. Also, number two explained the large snowflake. The large snowflake fell in Fort Keogh, Montana, spelled K-E-O-G-H. Hmm, okay. It fell on January 28th of 1887. Oh, so maybe there isn't a photo. <laughs> so like a wall drawing, like a cave drawing of it? <laughs> <laughs> the, who knows 1887 i guess i didn't realize this was so long ago the snowflake was spotted by a ranch owner named matt coleman who described it as being larger than milk pans <laughs> my god i don't even know what a milk pan is but okay americans will use anything <laughs> with the metric system okay hold on i want to look this up really quick Oh, damn, Trevin. Nope. There is not a photo of it, guys. I hate to be a conspiracy theorist, but I think that guy's a liar. I am starting to lean towards that myself, mm -hmm. you know, because literally I looked this up, the largest snowflake, and it said it was recorded. It's documented. But when you go to the images, it's just a bunch of digitally created <laughs> pretty snowflakes. So, Well, damn, I want to know what the biggest one photograph. Like, are there still ones close to that? Because that would be cool to see. I don't know. Oh, guys, send us your gigantic ass <laughs> snowflake pictures. We'll figure this out. Okay. We'll make a post if we can find some real ones. <laughs> okay. 
Well, this week, I see your winter facts and Mm -hmm. I raise you something much more fun. Mm. I'm going to give two truths and a lie about insurance. (laughs) (laughs) I can genuinely say I did not see that coming. And I can guarantee you it's a lot more fun than you think. Okay, let's try that out. Statement number one. In 2000, three sisters took out a policy for child care costs in the event that either of them immaculately conceived. Statement number two, a woman was once awarded $10,000 after finding a contest in the fine print of an insurance policy. Or statement number three, insurance companies are some of the largest donors to anti-war agencies, recognizing that peace keeps them from going bankrupt. (sighs) I would like to believe C, but the skeptic in me is saying that sounds too positive to be true. But my first response was to say that the second one was a lie. It's either two or three, so let's get real. It's probably one, but I'm going to go with, I think that three is the lie. And you did it. You got it. Finally! And that was well thought out. I loved your thought process. Great. Absolutely. You are correct. Insurance companies are not some of the largest donors to anti-war agencies. But it's actually much worse. Oh, they're the highest donors. (laughs) Yeah, they actually fund pro-war only. (laughs) They actually love war (laughs) with it all. I mean, they probably do. But (laughs) So coming from Investopedia.com, what is a war exclusion clause in an insurance contract? A war exclusion clause is an insurance policy specifically excludes coverage from acts of war, such as invasion, insurrections, revolutions, military coups, and terrorism. A war exclusion clause in an insurance contract refers to the protection of an insurer who will not be obligated to pay for losses caused by war-related events. Most of our coverages probably have this. I see. So if anything... If a war breaks out, you're on your own. Yeah, whether it be civil or... Or any other kind. Any other kind, you're on your own. So just remember, capitalism always wins. So good job for getting that right. My other truths. In 2000, three sisters did take out a policy for childcare costs in case one of them immaculately conceived. Oh my word. All three of them. I thought it was too specific to be a lie, but Mm -hmm. it's also so strange because... Even one sister doing that is a little odd. One thing that confuses me is they say sisters, and I have to believe it just means by, like, relation. I don't think it means nuns. But (laughs) some of it makes it seem like it could be nuns. Holy shit, if it's nuns, I was just assuming that they were just sisters. I mean, it doesn't say explicitly, but it does also say that the Catholic Church was pissed about this. So that makes me think that maybe it wasn't, but they could have been rogue nuns. Holy shit that actually makes a lot more sense because they tell stories of mother mary who did have an immaculate conception Mm -hmm. so they're probably like well we're just doing our due diligence just in case and you know what the insurance policy was to cover what i guess i already said it It was to cover the child care costs because i knew how expensive it is to raise a kid in this world oh yes so coming from the news.bbc.co.uk Essex-based BritishInsurance.com confirmed it had provided a £1 million policy. The firm said the women from Iverness had renewed the policy since the year 2000. The cover was meant to pay for the cost of bringing up Christ if one of them had a virgin birth. The managing director of BritishInsurance.com said the people were concerned about having sufficient funds if they immaculately conceived. It was for carrying and bringing up the Christ. We sometimes get weird requests and this is the weirdest we have had. So they didn't just think they were going to immaculately conceive anybody's baby. This was going to be Christ's baby? Yes, this was in here too. The burden of proof that it was Christ had rested with the women, and any premium on the insurance was donated to charity. It was going to be up to them to decide whether that was going to be the child of Christ or not. Wow. They'll just know when they see it. It's like, you'll know. Oh, yeah, you'll know. You'll know. That's not going to be a regular old baby. He added, the Catholic Church is up in arms about what we've been doing. We have withdrawn the coverage because it was causing a furor. The ladies have been informed. So that was in 2006. So they got to keep that coverage for six years. Wow. And none of them ever had Christ's child? No, they didn't have one. Oh, okay. I think they're still waiting. Checks in the mail. Okay. (laughs) And number two, a woman was once awarded $10,000 after finding a contest in the fine print of an insurance policy. And that's just a feel-good story. 
Her name is Donalyn Andrews, a 59-year-old school teacher. And it turns out she just read the fine print and on page seven of a travel insurance company called Square Moth out of mm. St. Petersburg, page seven found a thing that said, send an email here and the first person that finds this gets $10,000. What the hell? I'm so glad that went to a school teacher. Shout out to all the teachers out there. You deserve 10K. I wish that I could toss it at you right now. Yeah, make it rain. Wow. And that was in 2019. I need to start reading the fine print a little better. I mean, after our thing about Disney, I think we should always be reading the fine print. (laughs) But we don't. (laughs) Well, I'm so glad, Trevin. It's been a really long time since I got one of these right, actually. Yeah. I was really starting to think it would never happen for me again. And in my opinion, that was a really rewarding one to get right to. Yeah, yeah. I just had to be a little pessimistic mm-hmm. and lean into that feeling. Yeah. But here's some things you're going to really want to lean into. These ads. And we are back. Oh, yeah. And you guys... I have a listener story this week. Oh, yeah. That's why we do it. That's why we say what we do, even though it's always news stories. I know. (laughs) We honestly do personal and listener stories from time to time. Mm -hmm. I know it doesn't seem that way. We haven't done one in a little while. But as I told Trevin, I think we're going to have a whole listener story exclusive Mm. episode maybe at the start of march we think it'll probably be march we've got some plans for january and february which i guess we should probably talk about that oh yeah do you want to say that now before story time sure so january we're not gonna do any like sound effect stories our sound effect machine has gotten a little hot over this year and it needs to cool down it needs to cool down we're gonna take a dry january from the sound effects and Mm -hmm. the stories but we still have episodes coming out Every yes. week. We're still going to do episodes. I'm going to maybe do something really personal and uh, raw and we'll see how that goes. And then maybe just maybe have some interviews or something. Yeah. But then when we come back in February, we're going to do Florida February. Uh, and this is an idea that we've been talking about, you guys, mm-hmm. forever. We were like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could dedicate a month to all the Florida crimes that we can find? Mm-hmm. So Florida February is actually happening 2025 mark your calendars and get ready and then we'll probably be looking to kick back into news stories but before that right after florida february we'll do a now that's what i call listener stories volume three we'll be hitting the shelves so if you want to get a chance send them in now send in your personal stories if you're from florida or if you just know of any wild wild florida stories send them now so we can prep for february ahead of time oh man what if we did a listener story florida edition in florida february we could do that too i'm open holy hell i'm open you guys there's too much to work with with florida crimes but Yes, so we will still be doing episodes in January. Please stick it out. Actually, I think they're going to be a ton of fun Mm -hmm. and just something fresh for everyone to start the new year off and give our sound effect machine some time. Oh, yeah, she's been real hot. And then... And then, yeah, Florida February and listener stories, you guys. I'm so excited for the future. But I do have a listener story today as well. Oh, I love when they sneak in the regular episodes, too. Same. But today's story was sent in from one of our lovely listeners named Tawny. Peaks. And you know what's so (laughs) hysterical is that she does make a joke about that in the email. Uh. For those of you who don't remember, I told a story about a woman named Tawny Peaks who was doing an exotic dance for a bachelor party and motorboated the groom a little too hard Mm -hmm. and he sued her and I told a story about it. I really haven't met anyone named named Tawny in the real world. Mm -hmm. So very funny that we had this tie-in. Let me read just a small portion of the email before I get into her story. Hey, Amanda and Trevin, I'm a recent fan after hearing y'all on And That's Why We Drink. Hell yeah. Shout out. Thank you, Christine and Em again. We love any and all listeners that come over from the collabs we've done with them. They are great people. And it goes on. And have just finished marathoning my way through all your past episodes. 
I love the podcast. Amanda, you could be a voice actress, which, oh my God. We'll get you there. <laughs> Tell me more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then it says, and Trevin, your editing skills are always just perfection. Oh, thank you. It takes a lot of time. That it does. Anyway, I have a petty crime story that's really more embarrassing for me, in parentheses, the victim, than the criminal. Uh-oh, victim story. Yep. Keep up the good work. You and Trevin bring a lot of joy to your listeners, and it's so important to find a little laughter and levity when the world feels real fucked up. Then it is signed, Tawny, in parentheses, not peaks, <laughs> she slash her. Aw, thank you, Tawny. Oh, my God. I just couldn't even believe it. When I saw this email, I about died. Not only because the premise of the story was just something I found to be quite funny, mm -hmm. but the Tawny connection. I loved it. Yes, indeed. So, without any more introduction, I'm going to tell my version of Tawny's story. And here we go. We're told that collecting materialistic items means nothing in comparison to the rest of our existence. So why is it that so many different species act otherwise? Gray squirrels bury an unnecessary number of acorns into the ground, only to recover a little over half of the nuts after hibernation. Humans are even worse with this behavior, generating television shows with aggressive names like Storage Wars and Hoarders Buried Alive. The clutter has even trickled down to the ocean floor, where Ariel, the little mermaid, filled an entire underwater cave with human junk. I got gadgets and gizmos of plenty. I say all of this not from a place of judgment, but from a place of solidarity. I too have been known to collect some bizarre and useless items throughout my life. As a kid, I collected rocks and carousel horses, which still remain in my home today. And as an adult, I once had an entire bedroom wall dedicated to cooking spatulas. I'm sure if you ponder it, you can also think of a collection of items that means a great deal to you. One that may not be for everyone, but is yours to treasure. Today's story is about the despair that can happen when your prized possessions slip into petty hands. It was the early 2000s in a small town outside of Madison, Wisconsin, where a shy teenager sat behind the desktop computer in her parents' home. She pushed her glasses up onto her freckled cheeks as she typed rapidly, capitalizing every other letter for dramatic flair. Tani was typing out her new bio on AOL Instant Messenger, and it had to look perfect. As soon as she was done writing, she added wavy lines and stars made up of asterisks on either side of her not-so-subtle text, reading, Your future dream girl. She hoped that this was the perfect bio to make the boys who read it realize they were in love with her. That screen name changes everything. Although Tani was raised in a sheltered and conservative Christian household, that didn't mean she had to give up on a fairy tale online romance. She spent far too much time online chatting with her tight-knit group of high school friends and exploring the first versions of emojis. But when she wasn't online, she spent most of her time reading books on medieval history. Tawny's fascination with castles and cathedrals from that time somehow led to a growing collection of monks. She gathered paintings, prints, little statues, and figurines, all of endearing little monks, covering one portion of her room, with the rest of her space covered in cute ducks, rubber duckies, more figurines, and duck-themed art, PJs, and blankets spread across the remaining gaps in her bedroom. It may not have been the typical combination of decor for everyone, but it was the perfect blend for Tawny. Other than these coveted items, there was one other set of valuables that she held close. She kept the shiny discs zipped up in a protective case, perfect to store in her bedroom or to take with her while driving. Each piece carefully curated with her mind, body, and most importantly, 
her soul. Stacked neatly inside the worn case was her large collection of contemporary Christian pop CDs. From the smooth beats of the godly mercy men to the harmonies beautifully sung by the saviors of sin. Her CD collection was full of holy bops that could even make the devil himself bust a move. Early one morning, Tawny went out to her car, excited to start her day with a drive full of Jesus jams. But to her shock, she discovered that her Dodge Neon had been broken into the night before. Her driver's side door was left ajar, fast food receipts were scattered around the driveway, and worst of all, her case full of Christian tunes was gone. Tawny raised both hands to her head and looked up at the heavens. Why me? She shouted out loud. Without a valid response from the skies, Tawny knew she needed to get the local authorities involved in this diabolical crime. She called up the police station, giving them details of the missing music and its case. You don't understand what the CD collection means to me, officer. It's the perfect compilation of divine and danceable hits. Tawny pleaded desperately on her end of the phone call. Don't worry, young lady. We will do everything in our power to locate your worship music. We have alerted everyone on the force, and we'll get back to you as soon as there are any updates. The policeman reassured Tawny. Thank you. I'll be waiting for your call. An hour slowly crept by, with Tawny pacing back and forth in her bedroom. She feared that the crook was many miles away now, rocking out to her sacred anthems with evil intentions. Praise be these sweet-ass jams. Her worst-case scenario was interrupted by a phone call from the same officer she had spoken to earlier. Hello, officer? Please just tell me straight up if you think my collection is gone forever, or if there's any hope in humanity left. Tawny said urgently into the receiver. I've actually got great news. We located your CD case. It appears that it was tossed onto the side of the road shortly after it was taken. The officer responded happily. What about the CDs inside? Surely the crook kept the righteous rhymes for themselves. Tawny questioned. She knew the true value of each disc she had saved over the years. Nope. Looks like every single one of your discs was left in the case before it was tossed out. Maybe they dislike contemporary Christian pop music. Or maybe they're just an atheist. I don't know, kid. I wouldn't overthink it too much. God works in mysterious ways, but you can pick up your case at the station. Tawny paused for a moment, feeling mixed emotions. On one hand, she was relieved to hear the good news. Yet on the other hand, she was a tad offended and majorly embarrassed. Could it be that her saintly grouping of harmonious music was actually the lamest collections of CDs ever taken by a petty thief? We all have materialistic items that hold great value for its collector. Whether those belongings are monks, ducks, or even spatulas, not everyone will agree with its worth. And that's okay. Could you imagine if that was the decor for everybody's home? So continue to gather the objects that bring you joy, as long as you don't become a buried alive hoarder, that is. Whatever things you love, just remember... A petty criminal's trash is a good Samaritan's treasure. Damn, that would be such a slap in the face, but at least you got your stuff back, I guess. I know, it was a bittersweet moment for Tawny, I think. I did want to include this. Just to follow up, also in Tawny's email, she did say, Listen, I know. I was raised in a conservative Christian household. I'm not about that anymore. Don't judge me too much. (laughs) Now, my follow-up question is, was this your wake-up call that got you to change your tastes? (laughs) Maybe. I didn't ask that as a follow-up question. I am curious. Like, was it this moment Mm -hmm. where she was like, wow, someone took the time 
They broke into my vehicle. They stole all my CDs, which, guys, this was the 2000s, okay? Oh, I can picture my case. It was black and blue. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I had, it had a, a weird material well. that I hated when I scratched it yes! on accident. Ooh, I hate that material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone born around that time that loves music had their own collection of CDs, right? That mm-hmm. they kept in their case and they protected at all costs because Spotify didn't exist and none of this was a thing. So to really put myself back in that spot, if someone took all my CDs, that Mm -hmm. would be devastating to me. But I am wondering if it was kind of like, damn, as soon as they stole them, they just chucked them. I need to rethink my life choices a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Also, Tawny did send me a photo of her that we will post on our Instagram for the episode. But one of them is a school trip to France where she saw lots of monks and she loved it. And then the other one is an autographed CD case of a Christian contemporary pop band. I was hoping it was a monk's autograph. (laughs) (laughs) I just loved it. This story Mm -hmm. so much. I loved that it was like this horrible crime to her happened. She got the police involved. And then after it was solved so quickly, within an hour, she said. Dang. Like, it shook her. It mm-hmm. shook her a little bit. It was like, they just chucked my shit. They think it's lame. Sounds like it shook her faith, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's for Tawny to say. But perhaps, <laughs> perhaps there was a little bit of that in her decision. <laughs> Okay, now that we're on this subject of CD cases, and now you made me think about my own. Yes. Okay, so for me, and I'm a weirdo, but I kind of put mine in order of my favorites. So then, like, sometimes if one was my favorite, I'd be like, oh, actually, you're going to get shuffled back to this one. Because I was such a big corn fan as a kid. I had every corn album to start in chronological order, and then the rest of the collection would begin, which I think I still put it in like band chronological orders too, still. Really? So did you have any technique to how you organized? Boy, you know I did not. I was going to say you probably didn't organize at all. Boy, you know I did not. I had like the most random compilation of CDs. Mm Mm-hmm. I've always been this way. I like a little bit of a bunch of different things, like old music, new music, whatever. And then I would have like a bunch of random movie soundtrack CDs. That Mm. was like a big thing for me. Like, you know, I love musicals. So then I'd have those scattered in. And then I would have homemade CDs that I'd make at my uncle's house when I'd go to visit. Hell yeah. Where he'd burn them, you know, illegally download songs and burn them. And I'd have to like describe them on the front somehow or like, you Mm. know. I had like every single Weird Al album them, but only the bootlegged version. Hell to the yeah. But I was a minor and I didn't make it myself, so I can incriminate it right now. Yeah, these were all adults assisting our illegal music intake. And I'd gladly tell you the uncle's computer that was used to do it. So. Right? I will turn him in in a heartbeat. <laughs> Don't come for me. But I had no rhyme or reason. They mm. were all just mixed in and around and about, you know how I do. Maybe we'll have to do a poll or something because I'm curious if anybody else was organized with their CD collection in their case or if they were more like you, just whatever. It was just a big old hodgepodge. I didn't even organize them by my favorites. Wow. I'd take them out. I'd put them back in wherever there was an opening. It was that simple for me, for me. (laughs) I'm starting to think that there was a lot of signs of like my weird mental, (laughs) whatever I've got going on with me. When I dig back more, I'm like, oh yeah, I was really oddly organized with that CD case. And you know, a lot of people would probably think because I am diagnosed with OCD, Mm -hmm. that that would have been a thing. But I have a totally different OCD than like the organized People that have to have everything almost overly organized or it like freaks them out. Mm -hmm. That's not me. I have to do weird rituals so that my loved ones don't die. That's my version of OCD. So no, my shit was a mess. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you again so much to Tawny. I had a very easy back and forth. So many good little nuggets were given to me. And I hope that I didn't offend anybody with my dumb little jokes about the Christian pop music. But it was fun. It was fun to create the fake band names Mm -hmm. and add my own little spin to what she gave me. I love doing that with this show, being able to kind of make fake universes and then make fake bands or fake company names or whatever. Yeah. You can throw it away after this week. You never have to use it again. Just whatever. Exactly. Well, thank you again, Tawny, for sending that. I believe I was the one that actually approved you in our group, I think. So oh, nice. Welcome to that, too. Yes.
This week, you know, things have been a little weird for us. Yeah. We came back from that little break and, you know, I think the world's just been healing. Yeah, totally. And I think it's going to be scabbing over for quite a while. But I'm finding a way forward. I'm also trying to find joy in just the funny things. Mm-hmm. And I know that you all love things about animals. So I thought that the world needs an animal crime. <gasps> We haven't had an animal crime in a very long time. I'm trying to think when the last time we did one. My last one I can think of is maybe the bird racer, technically. I don't even know the last time I did one. Yeah. They usually don't have enough going for them that you could do a full story. So you Mm -hmm. have to pick and choose. Yeah. But I've got one for you this week that it's been an ongoing thing for most of this year. Oh, so it's recent. It's, It's recent, yes. Okay, okay. I'm excited to be able to share this with you. And I already know we have a very fun connection. Oh. And you'll figure it out very soon. (laughs) So without any more talk, let's just get on with the animal stuff. And here we go. Animals are wild, unpredictable, and occasionally petty. From Papa Dennis's bird murder dog to an oddly threatening racing pigeon, we've covered many animal atrocities. These critters don't follow our rules, partly because they don't speak our language. And honestly, that's probably for the best. The last thing I need is the squirrels in my trees getting brainwashed by Fox News. The truth is, animals are an essential part of our show. And judging by that spicy topical jab from that hypothetical tree rat, it's clear a lot of us are feeling some type of way right now, no matter where we land on the spectrum of human decency. So in the spirit of escaping modern chaos, or at least understanding it a little better, Let's dive into the fascinating world of animal crime. These stories remind us that nature's pettiness was alive and well long before politics ever entered the chat. So keep your bear mace and shark repellent close at hand. We're about to take a walk on the wild side. Because when you cross paths with an untamed beast, things don't just get dangerous, they get downright primal. General Nondescript Insurance Company, how may we assist you with your claim today? <laughs> the bear! The bear attacked my Rolls Royce! My beautiful, luxurious baby! <laughs> Sweet Jesus! No, not Jesus a bear! Like Winnie the Pooh, but this one has claws and it shreds fine leather interiors! I'm so sorry. Hang tight. I've got just the man for this job. Another beautiful day in my beautiful town, San Bernardino. Sure, we're famous for the original McDonald's Museum and the rim of the World Highway. But if you ask me, we ought to be recognized for something else entirely. Our legendary volume of insurance claims. That's where I come in. The name's Dill, Dill Frond. Top insurance inspector of 2023 for the General Nondescript Insurance Company. That title didn't come easy, folks. Countless hours of investigating and unwavering dedication earned me the honors of having my face on that $10 plaque. And now every single day of 2024 is dedicated to proving to my bosses and shareholders that I was the right choice. January came in swinging, and I'm already neck deep in claims. This is typical. Christmas surprise has gone wrong. Surprise! Operator error with a shiny new dirt bike. A brand new vehicle's getting broken into. These are the bread and butter of claims that kick off every year. But a bear claim? Or more specifically, three bear claims? Let's just say there's a reason they put their best inspector on the case. And if these paying customers think I'm signing off on an insurance payout without a fight, they're about to meet their second bear in this nightmare. Me, the bear of bad news. The front of Reuben Tamrazian's place seems like a nice, quiet enough neighborhood where I don't feel rushed to get out of my car. This buys me a little time to review my notes before going in. Client called in this month, saying that they walked out to see their 2010 Rolls Royce Ghost was torn up. After checking their security camera's footage, they found that a bear had broken in and damaged the vehicle. Oh! And there's a link to the footage. The video technically has no sound, but since you're hearing the voice in my head, maybe the audio in my head can reflect the quality of the video I'm seeing. Let's try. Grr, I'm a fucking bear. Fuck this car. I'll bump it. Grr. Let's see if their passenger door is unlocked. Sweet, luxurious leathers. Time to poke some shit. Oh, crumbs in the back seat. Fuck this car. Grr. Now I'll go back out the way I came. I walk up to Reuben's front door and knock. He answers before I can make my third. Hi, I'm Reuben. Are you here about my Rolls Royce? He asks in a panic. 
The next thing I know, he's going on about how scared he was and how long it would take to pay out. But I couldn't tell you much about the conversation. Here I am, with the victim in front of me, and all I can think about is that security footage. I've never seen a bear break into a car like this before. It was efficient, an in and out operation with almost surgical precision, covering all four quadrants of the interior in record time. It was as if man's greatest predator had shifted its focus, not towards bloodshed, but racking up the highest possible amount of auto damage. My god! They've evolved to crave capital losses over blood. This is bad. Whether it was the haunting nature of that video, or how utterly forgettable Ruben was, the conversation flew by without yielding any real clues. The initial questions passed quickly, and I made my way to the vehicle to take pictures and perform a visual inspection. The wreckage was just as questionable as the footage. The bear made a clear entry through a passenger door, scratches in the leather, slashes in the door panel, but honestly, I expected more damage from a 200 plus pound bear in a luxury car. These scratches were too neat, almost deliberate, inconsistent with the oafish nature of a beast in a foreign space. And maybe I'm a bit of a scat king, but I was kind of expecting to find some poop at the scene. I head back to my vehicle, running through my mental notes to prep for the next step, my head spinning with possibilities. Bear evolution? Petty crime? And now multiple bear attacks? This could be the biggest blow to the insurance industry since the great insurance drought of 2007. It can't be. I'll just watch the next security footage, and it'll be completely different, I'm sure. This is all just a big coincidence. Bears back, bitches. Growl. A Mercedes? Grr, fuck you. You're just a fancy Jeep thing. Rawr. Bear shit. Well, that settles it. Ruben's car attack wasn't the only one. I'd even wager this was the same bear. But something about it feels off. Almost unnatural. Then again, it can open doors. It's already doing things no bear should. Let's check out the third victim's footage. I hope nobody left the passenger door unlocked. Rawr. I can't watch anymore. It's too shocking, too repetitive. This footage needs to get into the hands of scientists, and I need to find a way to not pay these claims. We've already paid the claims. My claims chief says, unfazed by the fight I put up. How could you? I told you something was fishy, and it wasn't the residue on those claw marks. You better lower your voice, Frond. You know who your superior is. Yeah, I know who my superior is, but that doesn't make you right. Besides, you haven't heard back from the biologist at California Fish and Wildlife. You can keep your investigation open, but we had to pay out those claims. You know how our turnaround times work. This is bureaucratic bullshit! Yeah, I may have lost my cool, but I had to stand for what was right. I won't stand for those outbursts, Inspector Frond. Turn in your badge to the front door. You're on paid leave. I ripped the plastic badge off my hip and threw it at the businessman in front of me getting in one last word before slamming the door. I hated that picture anyway! I stomped down the hallway like an adult toddler, thinking about how unfair and political this world has become. A man used to be able to cancel a hit and run just because he said so, and no one would bat an eye. Now I'm paying out claims before my investigations are even completed. At least this forced vacation gives me a chance to light up a J, let my rat tail down, and crank some dad rock to ease my middle-aged angst. Insurance Inspector Frond. I haven't been called that in roughly 13 hours. This is Dr. Nigel Hammersberger from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. We've held a fundraiser to gather the resources to review your footage, Mr. Frond, and we have your results. My God, Dr. Burgle Burgle, that's great news. What is it? I don't know how to tell you this, Inspector Frond, but that's clearly a human wearing a bear suit. In January 2024, the California Department of Insurance received a claim stating that a bear had entered a 2010 Rolls-Royce Ghost parked at Lake Arrowhead in the San Bernardino Mountains and damaged the vehicle. Accompanying the claim was a video showing the animal entering through the passenger door, crawling inside, and thrashing the interior. However, further scrutiny of the footage raised questions about its legitimacy. With assistance from the Glendale Police Department and the California Highway Patrol, investigators uncovered two additional insurance claims filed on the same day in the same area. This time, the claims involved a 2015 Mercedes G63 AMG and a 2022 Mercedes E350, both supported by similar video footage. The recordings were sent to biologists at the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, who concluded that the bear in the videos was unmistakably a human in a costume. A search warrant executed at the suspect's homes uncovered a bear costume and a set of kitchen meat shredding claws used to mimic the damage. Ruben Tamrazian, 26, a rat Cherkinian, 39, Fahi Murudikyan, 32, and Alfia Zuckerman, 39, 
were arrested and charged with insurance fraud and conspiracy. Authorities also issued an outstanding warrant for a fifth unidentified suspect involved in the Grizzly scheme. In total, the fraudulent claims defrauded insurance companies of $141,839. As this is a recent arrest, no sentences have been handed down yet. Well, how's that for an animal crime? I apologize for the misdirection, but when your country elects a wolf in wolf's clothing, it's only natural to end up with a criminal in bear's clothing. These are dark times, my friends. You can't even feel safe in the woods anymore. What looks like a bear might just be a man in disguise. I know we didn't technically get the animal crime we were hoping for today, but consider this a lesson in managing expectations, and more importantly, a reminder to always question what you're shown. Because whether it's through smoke and mirrors, the fine print and seemingly benign legislation, or a cheaply made bear costume, it's important to remember that no matter what you're being shown, you're probably getting defrauded. <laughs> so, okay. There was only one bear costume found. Mm -hmm. So it was the same person doing it for all these different people. Either that or they shared it. And I don't know. And that's the thing is like, I didn't give these characters much because all the things just focus on the costume and how three of them did it. And you can watch all three videos, but they don't put anything in on the suspects because I guess they just don't have enough information on them yet or what. But yeah. <laughs> It's a group of five people that work together in some way to attack their own vehicles <laughs> with a bear costume and file insurance fraud claims. This is like a real life Scooby-Doo scenario. They're always looking for a monster and then it turns out it's just a human in the costume. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a picture of the suit. Oh, okay. The claw thing makes more sense now that I'm seeing a visual. In the videos, they're in like black and white. It looks like it's on the side of a cabin or something. And you can just kind of see a car from the distance. And then you see the door open and then you see the bear head get in and it just kind of starts rocking. And you see it kind of scratch at the steering wheel and then it crawls in the back seat <sighs> and then comes right back out the passenger door and leaves. And it doesn't spend that much time in there. And it happens the same exact way all three times. <laughs> This is so idiotic. <laughs> it's hilarious. God, do they really think that people were going to fall for this? They really did. I mean, I guess they did get paid. That's the thing that confuses me, too, is it says that they defrauded them $141,000 between all three of the instances. So that means the insurance claims had to have already paid and then further investigation. Then they came back and reversed it and then got them arrested. So I don't know how that works. That's why I put that in that Dilfrond had a hardcore boss that had to follow the rules and still pay the claims. Right. I'm guessing that's probably how it worked if they already had their money and already defrauded them because they would have said something like they could have defrauded them. You know? Right, right, right. That is interesting. And it happened in January and the arrest just happened. Um, this is November 17th and it happened just like this week. They probably just asked for more information because they were like, wait a minute. And then they finally took a long time to do it, but I'm glad they did. That's got to be the most fun day at work to be like, I'm covering an insurance claim. And I think that's a guy in a bear suit attacking his own car. Right. And like they didn't actually need a scientist, did they? I don't think so. Or a biologist or whatever you said. I'll have you watch a little bit of one of the videos. Because it's like, come on. Did they really need a biologist to examine <laughs> if the person is just opening up the handle? The video is from the California Department of Insurance Fraud Division, and they call it Operation Bear Claw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching it now. It's better than you'd think. Oh. Okay. When I could just see his upper body, it looked real. But when his little human ass went in the back <laughs> seat in that bear costume, that's a human ass. Yeah. You can tell that it's like a big one piece pajama sort of thing. And you can tell there's a lot of empty fluff yes. in the belly and stuff because it's not a full bear. And why would a bear just do this? I know. With no food in the car. I don't know anything about that, but I don't know how often a bear just gets inside of cars. I'd be curious to know, because we really don't have that problem here. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like he did it by busting oh, out a window. Oh, and then it's showing the damage. Mm-hmm. And the damage isn't that bad. Okay, the damage is not bad at all. It looks like it just kind of had a poke and then a light scrap. And they're doing it to these high-end cars, too. A Rolls Royce? Yeah, and the other one was like a really high-end... I think the other ones are Mercedes. Mercedes. One's like one of those big Jeep Mercedes. <sighs> it, that's another thing, too. It's like, you got defrauded $141,000 and that's the damage you did? Those must be some expensive-ass cars. Right. God, just a little tiny bear scratch. Yeah. A bear with all those claws putting all that weight on it would have punctured the leather easy. 
Dude, that is so embarrassing. I am cringing for these people. I'm sure there will be a lot more to come. It's a very viral story now, so I don't know if it will get back to being viral when the details come out. But yes, I guarantee you there will be another update of this one. So we'll definitely get it back on that one. Yeah, like I need to know. I need to know how these people know each other. Were they in like a furry fan group together? <laughs> and they were like, who has a costume of a bear? We need this done. I need some money. Like, how did this happen? And to follow through with it. Oh, my God. Because I get how they thought they could get away with it by having three separate insurance companies and not thinking they would be connected in that way. But... This is silly. (laughs) Yeah, it's very silly. (laughs) I mean, unless they're one of those people where they are living well outside of their means, maybe, and they just had super nice cars that they couldn't afford. And so they're like, well, we're just going to have a bear attack to cover all this debt we put ourselves in. But if they are people who really can afford to have it, then you're just an asshole. I know. (laughs) I mean, not everyone can just have a Rolls Royce. Yeah. I know that for certainty. Yeah, or you'd have one right now. Or I would have five. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Also, Trevin. Oh, squirrel. Squirrel. Our connection of the squirrel thing. Not only did we put them in our prologue, but we kind of made them like little side bits. Yeah. Not just a mention, but an actual bit. Yes. Mine was more about like squirreling away things and items. Mm -hmm. And yours was a little bitchy, politicized squirrel in the tree. But yeah, yeah, both mentioned squirrels. Such a weird connection. I don't know about you, but squirrels have been on my mind a lot lately. Yes, me too. So Mabel hates squirrels, as we've talked Mm -hmm. about. It's the reason why she barks at the trees crazy. And Emily has been going through a thing where she feeds the birds and watches the birds. And now she will put peanuts out for the squirrels because she thinks that's cute because the squirrels will like flip upside down and steal our bird seed. Mm -hmm. So now she is giving the squirrels their own little tray of bird seed and peanuts. And she's been slowly inching it closer to the back door. So now she has it to where the tray is touching our back door. So all the cats just sit and watch the squirrels like eye to eye. And it pisses Mabel off. Like Mabel used to bark at the door, but we trained her away from it. But it's like there's this new energy in her now. When we take a walk, she's like more defiant. I mean, that's got to be really hard to just have like your enemy right, right in front of you. And that's you can't her territory. So that's why it's been on my mind. Yeah. They've been on my mind because specifically we have gray squirrels. That's why I included them in my little prologue thing. But specifically... They are going crazy right now in my yard, burying their nuts, burying their damn nuts everywhere. And so I had them a lot on my mind, too. And when I looked it up, I realized they're just doing this shit for kicks and gigs because they don't even find half of them. Yeah. They're known to just like bury nuts everywhere. They don't really think it through, but they're very active in my yard in my neighborhood right now. Yeah, they're definitely active for us. Do you have gray ones? Or yours brown? Mainly brown. We just have a shit ton of gray in our neighborhood. It's so crazy. We have like a ton of gray squirrel families. They have their little nests in our trees. They throw nuts at us when we swing on the tree. Mm. And now they're just burying the nuts in the ground everywhere. It's crazy. I don't mind them, but I just don't like what they turn my dog into. Yeah. Oh. Which makes me hate them because I can't make my dog stop. Yeah, I feel that. Well, what a weird squirrel connection. Yeah, and I love that. That's a fun connection. Very random, but I hope that all of you are just having the best week ever. And remember, no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed to plant our seed for winter. (laughs) Wink. Bye. See ya. Don't go into hibernation this winter. Come on over to Patreon. Bonus content, ad-free episodes, movie nights, and parody hits. Come on. And do you like having raves of all the best early 2000s hits? So do we. Let's throw a social media party. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or Threads. Live, laugh, larceny. And have you ever asked a pal to dress in a bear costume and scratch the shit out of your Rolls Royce? If you do, send us your petty crime story, you rich-ass criminal. Live, laugh, larceny at gmail.com. Give us five stars wherever you rate podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or Good Pods. Yeah, yeah. I just had to be a little pessimistic mm-hmm. and lean into that feeling. Huh. Um, But... I have a few other things that you guys are definitely going to want to lean into. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. No, that was the worst one.
one of them are. <laughs>